Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're here with another video to help you improve your chess game. Today I thought I'd talk about a concept that is not a difficult concept, but apparently a lot of people haven't heard of it. It's called a PV. What is a PV? It stands for Principal Variation. The name of it gives you a strong hint as to what it is, and I'm sure my more experienced uh, viewers will know already what a PV is, but I thought I'd go over it because even some of my students who are fairly experienced, when I say, what's the PV, they go, uh, excuse me, but what's that? <clears throat> so let's take some examples of what a principal variation is. Uh, here's the recent U.S. championship. Let's pick a game out at random, sort of like we do when we do the 20-minute uh, exercise. Uh, today is the 16th of November, so let's pick game number 16, examine. U.S. champ 21 percent 16. Oops, didn't get that. Let's try it again. Examine U.S. champ 21 percent 16. All right, Grandmaster Robeson against Shanklin. <clears throat> All right, so let's pick some random position. Let's say uh, let's go up after White's uh, <clears throat> 17th move. Sicilian Moscow variation. <clears throat> okay, knight back, knight takes, knight b3, we sit after white 17th move, queen d2, bishop f5, bishop f3, knight back, <clears throat> b3. Okay, so it's black's move, and we're going to ask the engine, what are black's top four moves? So let's center our board i know we weren't centered for you there but it wasn't that important let's center the board now and let's move the analysis up a little bit let's open up the window a little so we can see everything let's make the window a little smaller here we're just trying to get it so you can see the computer's analysis when it finally shows it all right so here we go make the board a little bit bigger we're going to hit the analysis button here on blitzen we're using Blitz in, <clears throat> and we're going to hit the start button to start uh, Stockfish 14. And now you see here where it says multi PV, multi principal variations. Actually, that's a little bit of a misnomer, but that's okay. And we're going to hit the, the up arrow so that we're going to see more than one. So let's look at four. <clears throat> and we'll move the screen a little higher so you can see the analysis here. Okay, so here the computer, if you haven't seen my earlier video on how to read the comp what the computer is doing, it's showing the top four moves for white. Then after it numbers them one, two, three, four, the number in parentheses is the evaluation. Positive is good for white. Negative is good for black. The next number in brackets is the lo longest number of uh, ply that it's looking ahead. And then it has the expected moves. So what's a PV? A PV, even though it says multi-PV here, is really just this top one. This here that I have in blue is called the principal variation. It's the moves that Stockfish 14 is expecting will be the best moves for both sides. And as it looks deeper and deeper, it might change what the first move is of the PV. Right now, the, the best move in the PV the first move is 17, knight c8, but if it looks further, like right now, the second best move is rook a7, which is not the PV, but it's only one one hundredth of a pawn behind knight c8. So if it looks deeper, it might like another move better, and then the PV will not start with knight c8. But the PV is not knight c8. Knight c8 is just the first move of the PV. The PV is the whole variation. It's all of these moves here. And those moves will change as it sees moves that it finds better at different ply depth. So right now, the principal variation is knight c8, rook a2, knight a7, rook fa1, knight b5. The principal variation in chess is very, very important because it tells you how good a move is. The other day I was talking to a student and I was explaining the difference between static evaluation and dynamic evaluation. Static evaluation just looks at the position without moving the pieces in your head, and you try to evaluate who's better by counting the material, seeing which king looks safer, who has the control of the open files, 
<clears throat> who has the better pieces, your, your evaluation based on that information would be what's called a static evaluation. It's the evaluation you get without moving the pieces in your head. A dynamic evaluation is what you get if you move the pieces in your head and you say, well, actually, if somebody's going to move, what's, what's going to happen? And theoretically, if you have a perfect computer, perfect whatever, then your static evaluation and your dynamic evaluation are going to come out to be the exact same thing. But in reality, we don't have things that are perfect, so we need to look ahead and see what we can find. And that's what Stockfish 14 is doing right now. Stockfish 14 is looking ahead and it's saying that Knight C8, based on all these moves that it's seeing that it's looking ahead, it comes out with the best evaluation for black, which is losing by 1.18 pawns at 32 ply, assuming that all those moves are actually made. And what Stockfish is doing is doing the dynamic evaluation with its PV. Now, what do we call these other guys here? Well, these other guys, the, these are, he calls them multi-PVs. I actually call them, the, you could see this is, you could call this PV2 if you wanted, and you could call this guy here PV3, and you could call this guy PV4. What, what, are, what would PV2 be? What, what are we looking at when we look at PV2 here? Or as I like to call it sometimes, the, the MV, the, the main variation for the second best move. What you're seeing here is the second best move followed by the, the very best moves after that. So the only move that's second best in the second series, the only move that's second best is the first one. After that, it's assuming the very best moves for both sides. So in this first line, we're seeing the best moves for both sides in the PV. In the PV2 or the MV2, whatever you want to call it, you're seeing the second best move followed by the absolute best moves that it thinks that both sides could play after that. Obviously, what are you seeing now on number three? You're seeing the third best move followed by the very best moves for both sides after that. And finally, the fourth best move here, since I have set my multi-PV number to four, is rook to a7 followed by the very best moves after that. And what you should see is these numbers should get higher and higher as we go down because it's black's move. So we want to play the move that has the lowest positive number for white. And that's what you're seeing here. 1.37 is the PV. The second best move is 1.51. The third best is 1. Point, well, now it just changed 1.39, then 1.51. And now 1.65 is the fourth. So as we get down to lower and lower multi, multi variations there, MV4 or PV4, the numbers should get lower and lower for, for black or higher and higher for white because it's black's move and we're ordering the moves from black's best move down to his next best move, second, third best move, fourth best move. So right now it's saying that knight c8 is the... Now we can make the actual move played in the game. Let's see what Grandmaster Shanklin did here. Did he play the best move knight c8 or maybe the second best move knight b8? He played rook a8, and we'll expect since he didn't play the PV that the evaluation should go up for Grandmaster Robson. And it does. It goes up to 1.63. And now the PV for Robson is knight to c4. The second best move, which is right next to knight c4, is h3. It's jumping around, of course, as it looks deeper and it finds better moves. Now he's saying rook a2 is it possibly the best move, and now rook a2 has jumped down to second and now back to first. It settles down when you get in deeper plies because there's not as much chance that it'll jump around in the evaluation when the plies get deeper. But right now he's only at 25 ply. And of course, the closer those moves are together, the less critical it is that you find one versus the other, the more it'll jump around. If it, Right now the evaluation for white is 1.58 with his best move, 1.49 with his second best move, 1.41 with third best, 1.34 with the fourth best. So it's not that much of a difference, and therefore it's very possible when it gets a better feel on it, when it goes one ply deeper, that they'll, they'll reorder and they'll get in different orders. Let's apply what we're, what we're doing here to, instead of to a game, let's apply it to a puzzle. So let's pick out a random puzzle from my library here. Let's, uh, again, it's the 16th, so let's pick up puzzle number 116. Let's see what that is. Okay, so this is uh, a black-to-play puzzle. All right, let's, uh, 
make it a little bigger. If you want to pause the video and see what you would do for black, then you could take your time. Okay, so let me give you the answer to the puzzle. The answer to the puzzle is that right now, white isn't Sugzwang. If black wants, he can win the exchange with the bad move, bishop takes d2 check, and after rook takes d2, he can play rook takes d2, king takes d2, and he can get into an endgame with king and five pawns against king and five, where black has the better pawn structure and black has reasonable chances, but white's king would be closer to the middle. So the right answer to this puzzle, let's go back again, let's take the lines off the board, make it black smooth. So the right answer to this puzzle is what you really want to do here is run white out of moves, and you don't want to make random moves. For instance, suppose black plays king f8 and white plays c4, and black plays king to g8 waiting, and white plays c3, and black plays king f8, and white now gets out of the pin. Now this rook is not pinned anymore, and now black would pretty much have to take it, and now he could keep the rooks on the board or go into the king and pawn endgame. So this is not gaining anything for black by just doing random moves. The move that black actually wants to play that's the answer to the puzzle is to stop these pawns from coming up so the king can't guard the, the rook from c2. The right move is to play c4. That blocks the c pawn from moving and now the white king is going to have a problem. So let's say here white plays g4 while he's waiting. All right, so what can black do? Well, one of the things black could do already is he could move the bishop to the other side of that pawn. He could play bishop to f4. Now, if white ever plays rook to f1, that would remove the guard from the, the, the rook on d2, and black could play bishop takes d2 check and win a piece. So he can't do that. But what's white going to do? He's, if he, let's say he plays h4, and now black could play pretty much anything he wants. He could just move the bishop back and forth if he wants. So bishop e3 g5 let's say let's say he plays h5 it doesn't matter bishop f4 a4 let's say we play a5 and now white's really running into zugzwang if he moves the king to the b file then he loses the rook <clears throat> and if he pushes the pawns black, black will just take them off if he plays g5 black just has to be a little bit careful that he doesn't get the bishop pinned to the king Black could ignore him and just keep moving the bishop. He probably can take the pawn. If he takes the pawn and then rook g1, there's no bishop takes check. So probably taking the pawn is the wrong move here. Black should just maybe just move the king. If white plays pawn up, pawn takes, pawn takes. And now black can play something like maybe f6. If pawn checks, king here. And now again, white's running out of moves. If he plays rook to h1, black will simply take the bishop check. And then on the next move, depending on what white does, he'll just take the pawn on g7. Now, does black have to play c4 right away? Well, yes, he does, because if he makes any other move and white plays c4, he can't stop white from playing c3 and therefore getting the king out. So this, this is what's... What white is in here is called a bind. White's in a bind, and black needs to be able to play moves to keep him in the bind, and c4 is the only move. So we would expect the PV is that black's going to play c4, white's going to try to block in the bishop with some move. The computer's going to see that this doesn't work, of course. But if for a human, we would try something like this, hoping for h4 and g5 getting out of the pin, and black could play something like bishop f4 or bishop e3. And now white eventually will run out of these pawn moves. He'll have to move the king away from the rook because he's in Zugzwang or move the rook away. And he's going to lose a rook for nothing. So that's the PV. The PV starts with C4. And then after that, we just have to make sure we don't allow white to play like H4, G4, G5 and, and drive the bishop out of the pin. All right, Mr. Stockfish, having told people that, you're not going to make me look bad, right? You're going to see C4 is the only move in the PV, right? And Stockfish says, of course, Dan, I'm way better than you are. So Stockfish says, is C4 the only move that's winning? No, he says, you're probably, I'm looking ahead, and he says, even if you don't win the whole rook with C4, which is the PV, you're still winning the game if you play a move like B5, because if he tries to play 
c4, you can play b4, and now if he ever plays c3 and tries to get his king up here, you can take it. So he's saying there's other ways to skin the cat, but the easiest way to skin it is to play c4. Now if we if we take the same puzzle, let's, let's stop the puzzle and let's take the b pawn off the board so that black doesn't have all these cutesy things. And let's make it black to play here. Now black's actually down a pawn, but he has the exact same winning line. Now we shouldn't see as many MVs that are as close to C4 as we did before. So let's ask Stockfish. Ah, yes, now you see the difference. Now the, the best move is minus 5.8, and the second best move is only 1.05, because he doesn't have those secondary ways of, of stopping C4 and C3. And now we see the PV is C4, sorry, and now if G4, it says you could play bishop f4 or bishop e3 or even bishop g5. And here they're all relatively equally good. And if white plays h4, it says now you could m keep moving the bishop like I said or just move the king. And you're just going to run him out of moves. King here. He gives a3. King to g6. a4. Rook d7. Black's just making random moves while white runs out of moves. And now he's starting to realize after a5, a6, he's saying, boy, I really think I, I need to move the rook, the king, and just give up the whole rook there. So the so here it, it you know, the main, the, the PV now is king to b2. But the PV in the initial position here is the only answer really to the puzzle is c4. c4 is the winning idea to go for eventual bind and to put white into Zugzwang. If you're one of those people that when you get to these positions, you always play bishop takes d2 check, I have a little saying to help you remember, which is you don't always want to take off pin pieces because they can't go anywhere. So taking off, if, if white was threatening to get out of this, like let's say white plays g4, let's say black doesn't play c4, let's say white black plays a6 and white plays c4 and black plays a5 and white plays c3 and now black plays uh, king f8 and white plays king c2 well he's just gotten out of the pin now you do have to take the rook or you're not going to win anything at all so you win the exchange but in the initial position when you have a pin piece like this a lot of times the best thing to do is to put apply the pressure to that piece in this case by putting the white king into Tsukzvang and forcing the white pieces to go away from the rook. If you want to jump and say, well, rooks are worth more than bishops, and therefore I'm going to take it off right away, that's, you know, a reasonable way to start your thinking, but then you have to say to yourself, but where is he going to go? Where is he going to run away if I don't take it right away? And the answer is he's not going anywhere. In fact, zugzwanging him is the right way to think about this. All right, so we've now we've seen a PV in a game, and we've seen a PV in, in a puzzle. Uh, let's pick another random thing out of my library and see what we got here. Let's go, let's maybe take another endgame. Let's go uh, examine ptlib2% 233. I have no idea which one that is. Okay, so this is uh, white to play. So again, if you want to pause the video <coughs> and try to do the puzzle, it's white to play. All right, so what should white do here? Okay, well, if we break down this puzzle into its component parts, black is simply threatening to get a queen with a1 queen, and that's going to win the game. Black would then have a queen and a pawn against the bishop and two pawns, and it looks pretty hopeless for white. The bishop can't guard a1 if he tries to take the pawn and guard the a1 square. Black will simply take, and now... If white tries to run his pawn up the board and get a queen, it's completely hopeless. Black gets a queen, the pawn comes up. Black says, uh, I'm going to check you. If white's king goes away from the pawn, black will just take it. If he guards the pawn, then black will simply attack that pawn with the queen again. And after something like king e6, queen takes check. And it's going to be made in a few moves here. So... Things look really bad for white. By the way, this is the end of a more complicated, more well-known problem. I'm just showing the last part of it to, uh, to show people the, the, the nice part. Okay, so it looks completely hopeless for white. What could he possibly do? 
Well, the answer is you make the surprising move king to b7. What does that do? Well, if he gets a queen, it's not check. Why is that important? Because of all the other pieces on the board. The pawn's guarding these two squares. This pawn is guarding this square. This pawn blocks this square. And if black does get a queen here, white plays Check checkmate. Okay, well, but, but suppose black doesn't fall for that silly checkmate. Suppose he goes there and black says, I'll just move the king and you won't checkmate me. Maybe I'll play like king here. Well, the problem is all the moves that stop the checkmate move away from this pawn. And now white just says, thanks for the pawn. And white is stopping the black pawn from becoming a queen. And white's just going to win because he's, he, if the black king keeps doing nothing, white will just move the bishop away. He'll move the king closer and help the pawns come down and get queens. So amazingly, white's actually winning this position with the crazy move king to b7, threatening mate. And black has to give up this pawn in order to stop mate. And then he's not going to queen the pawn. He's not going to win. So again, let's, let's ask Stockfish. Now, what would we expect here before we put up the top two or three moves here for white? What should we expect? We should expect that Stockfish is going to say that king b7 is the PV. But we should also expect that Stockfish is going to say that the second best move is losing for white. So we should see the best move completely winning and the second best move losing. And that's what you would expect from a puzzle that there's only going to be one answer. So here we go. Let's start the engine and we'll show the top two moves. All right. So you can see the plus M and the minus M in the PV and the PV2 here. Plus M16 means white to play. If he white plays perfectly, he's going to make black in 16 moves. And the computer shows all 16 moves in the PV. And it says if white doesn't play the best move, if he plays the second best move, bishop e7 check, then black's going to play king c6, and black's going to checkmate white in 10, in 10 moves. So the best move for white mates in 15 moves for white, and the second best move for white mates in 10 moves for black. So this position is completely over. White, if white doesn't find the winning line, he could just resign. So it's super critical that you find king b7 here, and you win the game. Let's show the mate in 15 just so we can see it's going to stay at the PV. White plays king b7, threatening mate. Black's not going to allow the mate. Stockfish says he, he has several moves that allow mate in 14 now. King d6 is one of them. Bishop takes d4. Again, this is the only winning move for white. Plus 65 in the PV, plus 73. Now it's mate. And now he's seeing mate in 15. It should go down to mate in like 14. And minus mate, meaning black is mating in 16 moves if white doesn't play bishop d4. All right, so bishop d4. And now Stockfish says black has nothing better than to get a queen. White, of course, has to take it or he's going to, well, he could check first and then take it. That's still winning. Bishop takes is the best move. Now king c5. The PV says mate in 13 with bishop c3, keeping the king out of these squares. King to d6, king to b6, king to e6. Let's go get a queen, c5. Now Stockfish realizes going back and stopping him from getting a queen just gets mated faster. He says, I'll just let you get a queen and I'll run away. Humans usually don't do that. They make you show that you can get a queen. c6 mates in 10, as does bishop d4. King f4 holds out the longest. And now the right move to mate, if this was a puzzle, white to play and mate 9, the only right answer would be bishop to d4, keeping the king again away from these central squares. King to g5, c7, king f4, c8, queen. King to f3, now mate in 6. Queen f5 check. Notice how the bishop is helping the keep the king from going. King tries to stay toward the middle. Queen check. King to d2. Bishop to h8. Wouldn't have guessed that move. <clears throat> if king to c2. Queen to e2 check. If king to b3. Then the obvious king to a5. And now if white tries something like King to, well, he only has one legal move. King to a3. And there's our queen to b2 checkmate. checkmate. Okay, so if we go back to the start, 
Stockfish should see. Right now he's saying mate in 17. I forget if it drops to 16, but mate in 17 here. Okay, so that's a PV. The P in this case, since it's a puzzle, the PV is going to be the only winning move here in this particular puzzle. The second best. In the other puzzle where he was in Zugzwang, there were several ways that you could put him in Zugzwang, so there was, wasn't only one winning move. Once I removed the B-pawn, there was one move that only clearly wins. Here, this is a clearly white to play and win. There's one move that wins, everything else doesn't. So the PV is going to be that winning line. Obviously, once white plays king d7 and black makes his move like king to d6 and bishop d4, now there's many, many, many ways to win. The PV at this point will only show the best moves for both sides, not the only winning moves for white. Because once white solves the gets this far, he's got lots of ways to win the game. All right, so today's video has been about the PV, the principal variation. It's always this guy. It's the first one, the first line that Stockfish shows, which is the best move for both sides. So if you're solving a puzzle and someone says to you, what's the PV? You say, well, I'm going to go here, and if he does his best move to try to do this, and tr a lot of times the PV isn't always the best moves. It's the best first move, but then a lot of times in a puzzle, the second move for, for the people are the moves that give him the most resistance or the most logical moves are the ones that he's really going to try to stop you. And those won't always be the same moves that, that lined up with the original, all the, all the best moves for, best, for the player because a lot of times Stockfish will see, oh, once you make that first best move, then no matter what he does, it's hopeless, so I'll just go here. While with the human, they'll say like, well, if he tries to stop you by going here, it doesn't work because of this, this, this. And the computer's already seen that and saying, I won't even try to stop you. I'll just let you do it. But the, but the PV is going to be the main line of what you're going to analyze to try to show what the answer is. Or when you're playing in a game, the move that if you make this move, this is the reason why this is your best move. And this is what he's going to do against it. But you could still do this, this, and this. And that's the best that you can do. Everything else is not going to be as good. So when you have that best idea, we call the top candidate move your king of the hill. And your analysis of the king of the hill as to what's going to happen is basically the PV. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully it does. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And please tell your friends about my channel, Dan Heisman Chess. If you want to like the video, great. You can also subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye.